We were permanently reverted into our beast form by Zant. Zelda gave her life so that Midna could walk in the light with us. And our only lead here is into North Farron Woods in search of a legendary sword that may be able to cleave us of our dark curse. And it's the monkey from the forest temple! How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time, Samba. And it's being attacked by puppets. Why puppets? Oh well, we can deal with them fairly easily, the same way we do with Shadow Beasts. They're pretty simple to beat off, too. Did... did you save me? Th thank you! Listen, since you're so nice, let me tell you something. There's a really pretty wooded area on the other side of this cliff. I climbed over there, but when I tried to get deeper into the woods, those guys attacked me. What's in those woods, anyway? I don't know, but I have a feeling it's worth our while to check it out. And yes, this is the area off to the left of the forest temple. It looks like it's gated off, but I'm pretty sure it's always looked that way. So there's another section of forest beyond this cliff, huh? Alright, giant, let's go! Yeah, there's an entirely new section behind the forest temple. I mean, this has been here the entire time. We just never thought to look over here, although I don't believe you would have been able to get here if you wanted to, and these keys will knock me off if I don't deal with them now, so I'm just going to get rid of them. We had to wait for these spinny bridges to align themselves anyway. Oh, uh, it's almost nostalgic seeing these things again. We haven't seen them since the Forest Temple, have we? Well, by the way, guys, hello, this is Universal Giant. This is Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is a tightrope. These are swinging logs. This is platforming without jumping. This is another platform, and this is a howling stone. Well, that sounds familiar. I tell you what, the howling stones bringing back all of these fond memories... Probably my most underrated favorite part of this game. Don't remember too much about it, but what little I do? Brings back very fond memories. Prelude of light from Ocarina of Time. Let teachings of old pass to you. Take sword in hand and find me. Remember what we used the Prelude of Light for in Ocarina of Time? Yeah, that's actually significant here, but you can see the Hero Shade is in South Hyrule Field, which we can only access, at, at least for now anyway, from Castletown. And we're not near Castletown, so he'll just be sitting there for a while. Not in any hurry to get his new, uh, technique, either. Not that it isn't useful, but I just don't use it as often as I probably should. The Sacred Grove. And if we listen too long, we'll be able to hear a very familiar theme. But, first, notice this Howling Stone with the Triforce symbol on it. Totally messed that song up. I I am so sorry. I pride myself in always getting this song right. If you're any sort of Zelda fan, you will recognize that song. I'm so embarrassed to have gotten it wrong the first time. Because once I played this through, I've heard that song, I never forgot it. And every time I'd get to this point, I would just skip the howling tutorial and go straight for the song. 
And yes, that is indeed a Skull Kid, whether or not it is the same Skull Kid as the Skull Kid from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, or if those two are even the same as the Skull Kid from- oh, who cares. He's gonna be sending down those puppets infinitely, so really the only way to get rid of them permanently is to track down the Skull Kid himself, who's somewhere. And I just like to get rid of these guys in the, as soon as they spawn, because that's when they're most vulnerable, in that they'll just come straight towards you, and they won't attack you until you give them a little bit of time. Where's the hole? Did we come through here? Am I lost already? Jeez, a wooded area where I'm easily lost. And a Skull Kid to boot. Well, I wonder what this area is supposed to be a reference to, but... We'll hold off on that for now. Just go after the Skull Kid. What instrument is that, by the way? It sounds sort of like a horn... Is it like a horny... Horn did, I, did I almost call it a horny kazoo? What is wrong with me? We still have to chase the guy down, though. Sticking to what I said, let's get rid of the puppets while they're most vulnerable so they don't start attacking me, but... It's up to you whether or not you want to do that. You can almost outrun them for the most part, but it eventually just gets to the point where it's too annoying to bother, and you just go chasing after them anyway. Yeah, this looks like the area he'll be. If you listen closely, you can even hear him summoning them, and hear him playing his horn up there. So that's your indication that he is in this room and not a different room. So let's just get him here. And we hit the wall in the cutscene, even though we were invisible during the cutscene, so sparks flew up from where we hit the wall, even though we weren't actually there. I've never seen that before. And now the camera's stuck up against a wall. Can these guys swim? Apparently they can. That's news to me. Wooden puppets can swim. But each time you go through the area, each time you hit the Skull Kid, he changes around where the walls are. So he'll open up new areas and close off old ones, making this place really difficult to get around. It'd be really nice if we had a map of this area, wouldn't it? And I hear him up there, but we can't get up there from here. We actually have to go into another room! And go up the stairs in the other room! Oh my goodness, the thinking involved in such a puzzle! But yeah, the Skull Kid's just right up here. I wonder if I can jump right off here. Did you see me hit the ground in the sky? I wonder where I'm going to drop. Am I going to drop off the ledge, or am I still going to be on the ledge? <laughs> Look at that! Oh, that is priceless. I guess you are invisible during the cutscenes then, but he opened up a brick wall so we can go through, and you know it's important if it's a brick wall. I don't need the health! Why does this game give me health when I don't need it? And one rupee away from max, but... Once we jump down here, we're not getting back up anytime soon, so... Just be prepared. The showdown with the Skull Kid. You know, I never paid too close attention to the shape of his lantern. It may be the same as the pose. Maybe a smaller version. I'm not sure. I'd have to compare them. Yeah, but at this point, you he's going to be extremely difficult to hit if you don't take out the puppets. Once you do, you can wait for him to stand there. Summon more. And once he does, is your opportunity to attack. And then he'll summon more for the second round. Let's see if I can get up close to him and show off why you can't immediately attack him. Because if you get close to him when he's not trying to blow his horn, he'll just disappear. So you really do have to take care of at least some of the puppets. And that way, if you do, he'll start summoning more, and that's your chance to attack him. You don't want to do it too soon, though. Because even if all the puppets are gone, he'll still jump away if you approach him too early. I mean, this battle is annoying, but once you have a system down, it's fairly easy. 
Especially if you give these guys a chance to surround you so you can attack them all. But you don't have to destroy every last one of them. He will summon more if you defeat enough of them. You don't have to defeat them all. And three hits is enough to do them in. And he opens up the way out, but this isn't the way we came in. This is an entirely new way out. Well, this is an interesting location. Looks like some sort of ruins. I see a Triforce in the ground and a symbol to howl. Gee, I wonder what we should do. Yeah, now I know what threw me off the first time. The fact that you howl the song faster than Link does here. He takes his sweet time howling here, but us, we have to rush, rush, rush. It's like how you'd mash the C buttons to play an ocarina song as quickly as possible, while Link would still sit there and do the whole song. Whatever. Puzzle time! Yeah, this definitely surprised me the first time I got here. Never expected to see something as weird as this. The statues come to life and they give us tiny little platforms to jump on. We are guardians of this land. Guide us to where we once stood. Only then can you enter the true sacred grove. And the objective here is to get these two statues onto those two yellow tiles where they were before. The trick here is that one will always face in the same direction as you, one will face in the opposite direction. Now what I aim to do here is get both of them into opposite corners on the top part of the screen, the little 5x3 section. And it's difficult to explain how I do that because I never really go about this the same way, I just fool around until something works. But a couple of funny things I want to show off. Don't jump to the same square a statue's going to jump to. You don't get any funny sound effects or smashing, but just the fact that Link may have just been squashed by a giant statue is pretty amusing. But yeah, I... So you see I have the left statue in the bottom left-hand corner there. I try to get the other statue in the opposite corner. And this gets annoying pretty quickly. I don't know how long it takes you guys to do this puzzle when you get to it in this game, but it always gives me problems. You can't jump to the same platform the statue's on either. Let's see, how should we go about doing this? I guess we'll try to get one in the appropriate spot. I think this way the one on the bottom will chase us, but I'll also bring the top one down too. Well, at least this way we can separate them an odd number of spaces. Maybe we can bring this guy over? How does that help though? No, that doesn't help in the least. Will he jump behind me? I don't want to take that chance. I don't think I want to do that. Well, I guess we have to if we want to get out of this puzzle. Yeah, he does. Okay. That's good to know. They'll also not jump into each other, I might as well show that off. Uh, is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, they won't jump into each other. So let's see, I think what I want to do is separate these two enough. And give myself four spaces here, so that the one on the right will jump down four spaces with me. And I believe this way I can get the one on the right into the top right corner. And once we do that, we have this puzzle solved. Yeah, right there. So now all we have to do is get these guys to go two spaces. And there we go, puzzle solved. That's a lot faster than I expected it to be. It's silly that that's all we have to do to gain access to such a legendary treasure as the Master Sword, but... 
uh, I guess other people wouldn't be able to solve the puzzle or something. Go now to the sacred place, beast. We yield passage to the sacred grove. So, all it takes to become a legendary hero is solve a simple puzzle. Good to know, I guess. But there it is. Actually, there's a Hylian inscription on there, isn't there? Really difficult to make out. I wonder if anybody's ever translated that. I can barely read it. And this I always found entertaining. We gather the twilight out of ourselves the same way we got few shadows from bosses, but that's nothing compared to this. Okay, I take that back. That was kind of cliche and expected. I, I'm more interested in the twilight thingy. The sword accepted you as its master. <laughs> Did the game ever really explain the legend behind the master sword or they just said, Oh, it's magical! Go get it! Although I guess they assume we know about it already. This thing is the embodiment of the evil magic that Sant cast on you. It's definitely different from our tribe's shadow magic. Careful, if you touch it, you'll turn back into a beast! Wait, why would that be a bad thing? That sounds helpful. This thing is too dangerous, it's probably for the best if we just leave it here, huh? But on the other hand, if we kept it, you'd be able to transform into a beast anytime you wanted. Now you're catching on. Yes, since Sam was kind enough to give this to us, we should be thankful and use it all we can. If you need it, just call me. I want to keep a low profile, so I'll hide in your shadow when you're a human, but I can change you whenever. You can be a wolf anytime you like. Also, thanks to this thing, you can work whenever you want by switching into wolf form. Hey, but listen, giant, you got a little favor to ask. Another favor. Would you mind coming with me to find something called the Mirror of Twilight is hidden somewhere in Hyrule? What, what, is that what you use to put on your makeup every morning or something? Yes, the Mirror of Twilight, our last potential link to sand. You're not going to explain to me what it is, are you? I'm going out of my way to do something for you, and you're still not going to tell me what's going on! Oh well, we have the Master Sword now, I guess that's all that matters. But before we leave the Sacred Grove, there is one little thing we want to take care of. And that is heading into this little crevice on the left side, turning immediately around and grabbing ourselves another golden bug. The male snail. Remember where it was. We will be getting the female snail in the exact same location later on. What do I mean by that? The same thing I mean by remember where this chest was. Oh, I love being so confusing to anybody who's never played this game before, which is probably a whopping none of you. 